Agent Carter, Season 1, Episode 2, Thoughts. This episode is called Bridge and Tunnel. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. Another episode I love, the top link in description box will enable you to donate to the site after strikers. And then there's some links to the videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive into the episode. So yeah, this episode introduces the radio show about the... Yeah, the adventures of Captain America, where Peggy Carter becomes Betta, Betty Carver, which, yeah, not not very subtle of of the the radio people, and yeah, um, an, another example of the the very you know. Yeah, all the all the sexism of the time. They they can't imagine that a woman was an important part of you know the the first Captain America movie shows very clearly he would not have won if not for Peggy's help. But uh, yeah, right. And and real quick, the episode is directed by Joe Russo. So yeah, very cool. Always happy to see the the Russo brothers in. Yeah, in you know behind the scenes in the MCU, and occasionally in front of the camera. And yeah, Angie suggests uh, Peggy could move to you know near her, uh, which which is very sweet. And you know she says the place is safe. Uh, you know, and there are a lot of women there, which I don't know if she means to imply. Yeah, I th let's see. I don't think she's saying that it's automatically safe because there are women. I think she's saying that the fact that there are so many women there implies that it's, you know, they they moved there because it was safe for them. Because, you know, sadly some, some places are not safe for women. And, yeah, quite appreciate that detail you know and there are various places around the world where women will group in a for example living area in order to you know their safety in numbers if someone did attack then the fact that there's so many of them in the one place you know predators are always trying to isolate their targets you know a lot of women in one place can make it much more difficult for the the predators and yeah so at first Peggy is not eager to to stay in the the Stark place but you know he insists that she see the bedroom and she agrees to stay for just one night which you know I, I appreciate that Peggy is a loud personality she's not this like superwoman who has no you know that's <laughs> She she can appreciate the the that it would be a really you know it would be a great night's sleep in that bed you know and that's you know even though she's talking about you know ah, I don't I just I don't know about this you know yeah that's I I don't I don't think that feminism is aided particularly by f female characters who are just basically like flawless. And, you know, in general, the MCU has done quite well at giving every major female character at least some character flaw. And, yeah, so Peggy is struggling to get Jarvis to, to leave. And, you know, after a little while, she says, popped a button. And she's like, no. You know, and he looks down and, and she manages to close the door on him. That was, yeah, <laughs> she knew that that would work. I I like the detail that various characters, when they talk to, to Peggy, call her English, which, you know, yeah, back then it would really attract attention that there was this British person in America, you know, the, you know, it's not, they're not necessarily saying that she can't be there, but they notice that there's a, yeah, and... Let's see, we have the... 
yeah, the the interrogation is, uh, you know, yeah. Um, so let's see the the name. Uh, I'm not good at names. Uh, sometimes. Uh, was it was it De Demidov? I think. Yeah. Um, yes, I believe so. You know, is you know he he stabbed this guy in the hand and you know twists the blade to get information out and you know the the yeah does manage to get some answers and yeah once he has the answers he just kills the guy or well i i should you know he sh he shoots him in the forehead with one of those bullets that should make you really sleepy i we know that it's possible for there to be blood in these ABC Marvel shows. You know, there is blood on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't know why they didn't have at least a little bit of of blood. I Maybe, the, you know, I, I realize it's more difficult to rig up and they wanted just the one shot. And I do appreciate, I like the camera panning across to show, or I guess it's a tracking shot. But anyway, yeah, you know, to show that before he started asking questions he also he killed this guy's wife you know completely ruthless and yeah very clever of peggy to pose as as a as an inspector of and you know once she sufficiently annoyed the guy to the point where he leaves her alone then she can go and actually look for the the radiation and yeah, she notes there one truck is missing and gets the name and from there she can get the address. And she realizes, you know, the, the photos of her from the the first episode, you know, of her in disguise, you know, are the, the those yeah, she didn't know that they had confiscated the camera now she finds out and you know Sousa is going to to look across them and you know of course he locks the drawer which you know makes sense from his point of view it's it's very important evidence you can't you know just in case someone has managed to get into the office it's very important and <laughs> Jarvis, you know, at first still isn't quite, he's, he still hasn't quite accepted, you know, when, when Peggy asks for something, it, it means now, you know, so he's like, well, let's see, in 30 minutes, the linens, will <laughs> just, yeah, and Ray Wise, very cool to see, well, you know, well, it's, unfortunately, he's appeared in some really, ridiculous conservative stuff like he's in the I used to respect him a lot more before he did that but he is you know he is very talented what was the thing that he appeared in I'm not seeing it on his was it that long ago um I could have sworn that, yeah, he's in uh, God's Not Dead 2, which, like, I feel like even if you are conservative, the God's Not Dead movies are just ridiculous. Like, if there was an equivalent, I, I don't know of, a, of an equivalent. I suppose it's possible that there is a left-wing equivalent. I would be calling that out as well. Let's just, yeah. But he is very talented, and he's you know, suggesting that this attack was an intentional act of sabotage by Howard, which, you know, of course, further adds to the, the, yeah, Howard's problems. And, yeah, we have Peggy trying to pick the lock, and very clever, you know, using this, piece of, of jewelry, you know, the the pin from that, basically, to, to try to, but the phone starts ringing, and she has to get away from there, and, yeah, it, it is this thing of, you know, yeah, the, you know, nice, nice, tense bit, and I appreciate that it actually does not succeed. 
you know, again, important to have, you know, female characters be human. She's She doesn't succeed at everything. And, yeah, so she scans for Vita rays on the clothes and has to throw out the, the wristwatch. And, yeah, she recognizes Miles Van Ert. Uh, I feel like I've seen him in, let's see, right, he was in Oppenheimer. Maybe that is what I've seen him in, but yeah, very, wait, was he the one, I feel like, yes, he was, he was in Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles, I knew I recognized him, yeah, you know, he's, yeah, he's, he's great for this kind of thing, nice and just creepy and, yeah, um, and yeah, I, I quite like you know she, he's he's like yes I got away scot free and move you know about to leave, and Carter you know Peggy is like one more th there's just there's just one more thing, and points out you know maybe we should look at their regular clothes as well, and you know he just takes off running, and great detail that like Peggy. Instead of just running after him, she takes a shortcut, you know, and, you know, borrows the guy's, this this one guy's, like, um, crap, what are those called? It's not suitcase, but, like, baggage, you know, excuse me, and, you know, uses that to, to trip him, hands it back, may I be of any further assistance, you know, and, and we, we see the, the guys who, who I, th I think it's Dooley and, and Jack, you know, who chased, they're like covered in sweat and just, yeah, that was, that was funny. And, let's see, yeah, and so they're, they're questioning Van Ert and, you know, use a fish, a fishing metaphor. And I appreciate, you know, carrot and stick on, on the, the table and, yeah, like, at, at first I thought, you know, once the carrot goes off, I thought he was straight up gonna, like, hit him with a stick. But no, it's for biting into while he, he punches him. And later, you know, well, we're gonna need a new stick. He bit all the way through. He he just kept taking the punches, which, yeah, they are... He is a fanatic, or he's terrified of the people he's working for. So see and Angie is is sad and feels like it must be personal that you know Peggy does not agree to to live at this perfect place I I quite like her character the the kind of like she's she's a little pushy when she's certain that she's right about something but you know, not to, they don't make her look obnoxious, you know, it's just, yeah, she legitimately, she, she cares about Peggy, she wants to help Peggy, you know, and, and obviously Peggy isn't, like, it, it legitimately is not, like, it's not that she doesn't like Angie, it's that she's scared that it will happen again, some assassin following her home, and, killing the person she's close to and <laughs> I like that they managed to fit an ad into one of the the radio that you know like Betty Carver is is like doing like she's like ironing or something and she makes sure to mention the exact kind of iron she has and I think this is accurate I think they did sneak in advertisements in radio plays back then I guess radio plays don't exist anymore, so I don't need to say it back then, but yeah. And let's see yeah, and, and yeah, she gets to the the house and uh Sheldon McPhee, I think, was the character, you know. Yeah, he's listening to the radio show and you know, she tries to sneak up behind him so she can take him out in a you know, subtle way. 
but there's that one creaky floorboard board and yeah the the you know he hears her and pretends for a second that he didn't hear her and then gets out the shotgun and they fight and it's intercut with the radio really loved that that was such a great just yeah you know she we see the yeah there's some there's some punches intercut with radio punches and they're like saying they're punching raw meat for for the sound effect and you know the broken broken arm that those kinds of things just yeah very very nicely done and yeah so the the um Leap Brannis, I think it was, tries to, to use the, the milk, you know, the, yeah, as a, as a getaway car. And, you know, it turns out he hits that start the car because Jarvis sabotaged it. Very, very clever. And, yeah, love the action scene involving the car. You know, we, we start off with, you know, before it turns into an action scene, we it is just, you know, yeah, they're going from one place to the, the other, and, you know, Jarvis is is um, in the in the back with all the, the, I forget what it's called, but the, I guess they're not explosives, the implosives, you know, and, and he points out that he's standing there trying not to focus on the the smell of milk gone bad which yeah that's yikes like if you've ever like even even a few drops of of milk that's gone bad smells bad he's in a milk truck it must be utterly overpowering it's it's very impressive it's it's the britishness in him that he can even stand there and still like sound like a gentleman and and isn't like screaming and and just how how awful it is, and yeah, of course the milk's gone bad. It wasn't supposed to be in the milk truck for that long, but the the you know it was used. the 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 truck was stolen and used for this. You know, what's it called? Um, yeah, for the for the transport. And yeah, I probably felt like it was just easier to leave the milk still in there. But but yeah, you know the the um, Leet jumps onto the top of the the truck and starts you know shooting, and Peggy tries to shoot him, but the gun falls you know, and and so she gets up there and they're like fighting, and he manages to shoot her in the leg. And very nearly hits Jarvis and does shoot. Um, hold on, what was the name again? Demidov, to the point that where he dies, you know, not very long after. Which is also great because, like, we're like, okay, as long as he's at least able to drive, you know, they're going to be okay. And then he gets hit, and it's like, I mean, yeah, before it was like his his sense of self-preservation that was keeping him going because if he crashes it there's no way he gets out he gets away safely but once you're severely enough wounded it really doesn't matter anymore that's not gonna you know so so yeah um yeah just really great all, all the action in these two episodes is is quite good and yeah you know the the at at the very end they they you know, one of the one of the implosives drops, and it's like, how are they gonna get? You know, and the car they managed to crash the car off the the thing, and you know, massive implosion, and yeah, just really, really very, very cool climax there to the to the scene, and the yeah, and and. Angie introduces Peggy to the, you know, there's like, you know, she passes like three women and, and says hello. And then for the, like the, you know, for, for several of them, she's like saying positive things, you know, she like, and then for one of them, she, she refers to her, I don't, I don't like saying the word, so I'm just gonna, you know, 
She calls her an SLUT. And obviously, I don't believe in shaming women for their sexuality. I feel like if you're going to bring something like that up, at least, like, point out the, the you know, the, the double standard across the, the gender binary and, and also just, like, I mean, what even made a woman be considered that way back then? Like, what, she once showed her ankle to a man she wasn't married to? Or, to, you know, because I feel like that way, you know, the, the, you know, right after Angie says that, you could just have Peggy, you know, say something like, I'm, I'm almost afraid to ask. And, and then Angie says she once showed her ankle to a a man that was married to another woman or you know, something like that. Just, yeah. But yeah, and she, she passes the interview quite nicely. And the, yeah, and, and then we get, you know, they were, they're looking at the, the photos and they're like, ah, oh, you know, this is it. I'm sure this is it. You know, Peggy, why don't you come take a look at this? And it's like, oh, they, you know, but no, it's, they're, they're arguing over whether or not it's a, it's this boxer, I think it was, you know, and Sousa apparently bet against her, which doesn't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's better for him to also have flaws than, than to not. And yeah, you know, he's he's going over the, the ones of her and he's like, you know, her face is never directly in front of the camera. And that is a great detail because I did pick up on that when, when you know, we only see the guy take one picture where we can tell, okay, she's definitely in frame. And in that picture, yeah, like her face, it's not like she's looking directly at the camera. It is like a little bit off to the side kind of thing. So, yeah, and, you know, there's a pretty decent chance he wasn't trying to take a picture of her. He was just like, she. he just, he he had started the motion of pressing and then she pass by, something like that. And, yeah, and we find out, you know, the the plate from the car has been discovered in the, what little there was left from the, the implosion of the, the plant. So, yeah, I guess this might be the last we're going to see of the implosion stuff, since they seem to keep it all in that one place, which would also make sense, you know, easier to, to deal with it then, and they didn't expect to be engaged in a, you know, they, you know, a, a dangerous situation with the car that had all of them, so, yeah, you know, yeah, they, they gave one to, to Spider Raymond, and so, so he could display it and, and sell it, and then they kept the rest in that one spot. But yeah, um, which, you know, yeah, the fact that it seems to me like they've, uh, you know, closed off that one of Stark's bad babies, that means they can move on to, to others, which I quite appreciate since we, you know, we were told there were multiple different ones. So some IMDb trivia for the, let's see, um, for the episode, yes. So prop master Sean Mannion reveals in the book Agent Carter Season 1 Declassified that the blinding device that Peggy uses is never seen clearly because the prop was accidentally dropped fell two stories down during rehearsal, breaking into 30 pieces. Let's see. See, right. A hidden Mickey is formed by three circles around newspaper one ads. The series is, of course, produced by Marvel, which is owned by Disney. Right. Another thing, you know, the, the guy, as he was dying, you know, the, the machine is broken, so they can't get words out of him. So he draws, like, a heart and, like, a thing through it. So I guess that might be a, cl a clue of some kind. So, you know, I'm guessing we're going to find out what, yeah. Right. Uh, Angie mentions auditioning for the part of Betty Carver. The writers had originally planned for her to get the part, and the radio show being an even larger part of the series. And when Thompson and Dooley are driving to New Jersey, 
Dooley was supposed to be reading through files in the passenger seat. Actor Shea Wiggum wanted to express that his character gets very little sleep because of his job. Proposed that Dooley would take a nap with his hat cocked slightly over his face. And the form Peggy looks at while inspecting the dairy trucks lists three British products, PG Tips, a brand of tea, HP Sauce, a brown sauce condiment in the same categories. Wish just a side. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Um, we're Worcestershire, or A1, and digestives, a specific sort of cookie. Yeah, yeah, digestive. Yeah, we have those here in Denmark as well. And and because the word sounds like it could be Danish, there was a you know small part of my life where I thought they were pronounced D Stevis which is, yeah, just in case there are any Danes watching this video, you're, let's see, that, it, I, yeah, for my international viewers, that is how it would be pronounced if it was a Danish word. Now, let's see, and, yeah, in the early 1900s, bovine tuberculosis was common in American dairy herds because humans could easily easily catch M. bovis. This was a major public health issue. By 1946, there was a massive campaign to limit M. bovis by testing all dairy herds until well into the 1960s. Any milk company whose cattle tested clean would proudly print on their bottles from certified tuberculosis-free herds. The Daisy Clover Dairy Bottle had no such notice. I don't know if that's supposed to be, like, someone meant to put it in as a, as a goof and it ended up in, in trivia instead. But the, yeah, I mean, that could be that it's a brand of, of milk that doesn't take enough care. And Leek Brannis is an actual Marvel character who appeared in one single comic book in the 1940s. So, yeah. And let's see. the Oh, yeah. One, one goof that is kind of amusing. At the diner, Agent Carter reads a newspaper obituary about her deceased roommate, Colleen. The same paper mentions other people who have died in 1996, 2006, and 2009. Yeah. And, uh, right, I, I did, it, it was pretty funny when Sheldon McPhee was, you know, the, the, he's like, you know, he managed to escape. And he's like running and he's still tied to the chair. And so they, you know, they arrest him, put him in the car. And, you know, it's something. Uh, let's see if I can. Um, hmm. I, uh, it doesn't look like any. Oh, he, wait, here we go. Yeah. The. <laughs> yeah. Do I even need to ask? Ask what? Yeah, I guess you're right. I used to strap a chair to my ass and take long walks around the neighborhood, too. Let's see, and... Right, and yeah, the the member of Quotes notes that Peggy is relieved and then decides to play dumb when, you know, about Joe DiMaggio. And... Let's see... I think that might be about what I have to say about right now. Yeah, I like you know uh, Hugh Jones is is like you know oh I didn't know our government had such good taste in secretaries. What's your name, darling? And Peggy responds, Agent. And. I think think that <laughs> and and yeah the <laughs> when when Peggy says you know put back the the part you you took out you know I need to drive this thing out of here before responding won't be a moment in in brackets long suffering and I do also appreciate the, the thing of, you know, an ideal butler provides services without being asked, which, yeah, I mean, that's good if you, if you are getting things right, but if you're not, yeah. 
Um, I appreciate that the the reason that Peggy, you know, the, there's you have the thing of, um, the the yeah, he's he's stitching up her her leg, and says I can't tell if you're being arrogant or ignorant. She does imagine she does admit both. I imagine, uh, you know, but the, you know, she, yeah, she, the reason that she can't. Um. Yeah, she she doesn't want to let people close to her because she's worried she'll get them killed. In her words, and you know she feels that Steve was capable of carrying the entire world on his shoulders, so she should be as well. And and I appreciate Jarvis pointing out, you know, Steve relied heavily on Peggy. And um, yeah, I I. I suppose maybe they're setting it up now to help, kind of, so she can, so it's something she can overcome, maybe even in this season. So, yeah, I I hope so, because the this thing of you know right right now she's kind of coming off as just like stubborn and illogical, which are misogynistic stereotypes about women and aren't even true. It's usually like if you've heard someone say that about a woman. You know, try to notice, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's never true, but very frequently it's stuff that's said by misogynists who are actually, it's it's actually them being stubborn and illogical, they're irrational. They're the ones not admitting that a woman was right about something because it goes against their worldview. You know, obviously people of all genders are capable of mistakes. But yeah, um... Looking forward to the next episode, which I might be able to do tomorrow, and otherwise it should be, the, yeah, certainly the day after tomorrow, if not tomorrow. And, yeah, two foreign agents with no voice boxes fighting over a milk truck full of experimental implosives. Just another day at the office.